Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and this bad boy right here is the Sonos Sub Mini which doesn't appear to be particularly mini just going off the size of the bloody box. The Sub Mini as the name kind of suggests is a smaller more compact version of the original Sonos Sub designed for small and medium sized rooms. It's available to buy from October the 6th that will cost you 429 quid here in the UK, 429 dollars in the States or 499 euros for our continental chums. So we're going to whip it out of the box now, show you exactly what you get, take you through the setup process, and then come back in a few days' time and deliver a final verdict on whether it's worth that cash. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. All right, so first up, what is in this massive bloody box? So first up, a power adapter. Everyone loves a power adapter. And this is the bit where I put my back out. Oh, bloody good thing I've been pounding the weights recently. Bollocks, there goes my lower intestine again. And that, nice and simple, is everything you get inside of the box. So now let's unsheathe this wee beauty and check out that gorgeous design. So the Sonos Sub Mini, much like the original Sonos Sub, sports a cylindrical design, very different to the norm. It's a sturdy 12-incher FNAF now that weighs in at just over 6.3 kilos. So even though it is mini, it's not exactly tiny. But all the same, it is undoubtedly smaller and lighter than the original Sonos Sub, which is better suited to bigger spaces. And this isn't the kind of thing that you need to hide away underneath a desk or a table anyway, because the Sonos Sub Mini does look rather dashing. This right here is the black model, but you can also grab the Sub Mini in white, both of them featuring a lovely matte finish. It's certainly a minimalist design, that's for sure, but it kind of gives it a finish like a work of modern art. The only real features to speak of are the Sonos logo up top. You've got that elongated orifice which runs right through the middle. And around the back, if you can call it the back, is the power button. And that's basically it. One thing I would say is because of the matte finish, unfortunately the Sonos Sub Mini does pick up fingerprints and grease and grime rather easily. And this black model is an absolute dust magnet as well. I've had to give it a good buffing about a half dozen times just while shooting this video so far. Now the only actual cable that comes with the Sonos Sub Mini is the power cable. You'll find the actual power socket squirreled away in this little nook underneath the Sonos Sub Mini. And these are the only two ports, the power socket and also an ethernet port. So stage one is plug the bugger in, I've already done that. And then stage two is download the Sonos app. But of course I'm assuming you'll already have some Sonos gear if you're getting the Sub Mini, so in that case you can just skip this bit. Once you switch on the Sub Mini, this little box here should pop up. So we just need to hit add. Roughly 10 seconds later you'll be told to tap your smartphone on top of the Sub Mini. So let's just do that. Two will pair up. And then once that's done, it's time to connect your Sonos Sub Mini to another Sonos speaker. And the Sub Mini is compatible with a range of Sonos speakers, including the Beam, the Ray, the One, the One SL, and it just pairs up with them wirelessly using the 5 GHz connection. So now that your Sonos Sub Mini is all set up and added to your Sonos system, it will automatically kick into life as soon as whatever speaker it's paired up with begins to do its thing. I've got mine paired up with my Sonos Beam soundbar, which is connected directly into my TV. So as soon as I stop playing a TV show, a movie, some video store and some bald head, that bass immediately kicks into life. But at any point I can override the TV by jumping into the Sonos app on my smartphone, going to the media section, and just playing a good bit of music via Deezer. Don't worry if you don't use Deezer though, because instead you can just jump into the settings, go to services and voice, and add a service and as you can see full support for the likes of Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music, basically absolutely anything you could really well think of. And Sonos also provides its own streaming service direct through the app imaginatively titled Sonos Radio and you've got some curated playlists and some original content on there but frankly if you're spunking out this amount of money on a Sonos sound system chances are you've got your own subscription service on the go already be it Tidal, Spotify, whatever. So is the Sonos Sub Mini actually any good? Well, you've got dual 6-inch woofers stuck away inside these face inwards and cancel out any vibrations that would otherwise cause some serious rattle and buzz. And I've got to say, those Sonos sound bods are freaking geniuses because it works beautifully. Even when those woofers are going full pelt, you'll only get the slightest bit of vibrations, the slightest tremor outside of the actual Sub Mini. Literally stick your face on this thing and you'll just get a nice gentle cheek massage. 
and the Sonos Sub Mini really brings the bass as well. The output can be fully customized in the Sonos app if you want, but even on the regular default settings, the Sub Mini really enhances those lows. The volume will automatically adjust on the Sub Mini when you boost it or lower it on the paired speaker. Just everything is automatic and just so easy to get on with. And if you happen to have one of Apple's iPhones, well, you can use Sonos's TruePlay feature, again, via the app, to get personalized acoustics for the Sub Mini to suit the environment you stick it in. The entire process only takes about three to four minutes. Basically, you'll have to sit there holding your iPhone while a whole bunch of weird sci-fi disco noises are blasted at you. And then next, you'll have to actually get up off your ass and walk around the place, waving the phone around. And in this way, the Sonos system will be able to fine tune your speaker and your sub to work well in the environment they're sat in. I can't really personally say I noticed any difference in the output after performing the fine tuning. Maybe it's just my buggered old lugs not really picking up on the finer details. Or maybe it's the fact that this room is just far too tiny to really benefit. And if you're an Android user, you won't be able to use this feature anyway, so hey ho. And that right there, in a lovely little nutshell, is the Sonos Sub Mini. And at 429 quid slash 429 dollars, yeah, it definitely ain't cheap. But if you're an audiophile, specifically a bass fan, you've already got a Sonos sound system and you've got quite a compact living space, then it is well worth that investment if you've got the cash floating around. That's why I think anyway, it'd be great to hear what you guys reckon down in the comments below, especially if you've got a Sonos Sub Mini of your own that you've been rocking in your homestead. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.